Hi class, in this lecture here, what I wanna do is I wanna work through two extra regression examples just from start to finish, just do a whole bunch of problems and have your graphing calculator handy with you. Um, we're gonna use it extensively on both these problems. Okay, anyways, here's the first problem. So the following table shows max dive times in minutes. So here's the max dive time in minutes um, based on the depth in feet of a scuba diver. And if you look what's happening here, the further you go underwater, as depth increases, max dive time falls, okay? So it looks like as depth increases, uh, max dive time falls. That's fine. You know, that I think that makes sense. Like the further you go down, the greater the water pressure, and it would reduce how much time you could spend diving. Okay, so which is the response variable and which is the explanatory variable? Okay, so remember our explanatory variable is the x variable, and then we have the response variable, which is our y variable. Okay, so here's what I think is going on. I think your depth explains your max dive time, right? Like if you tell me your depth, I can give you your max dive time here. So my x is depth. And my response variable here is the max dive time. Okay, so the first thing says create the scatter plot for the data and comment on the relationship. So what we're going to do to do this is we're going to load up our graphing calculator. And the first thing you're going to have to do is you're going to have to hit stat under edit number one. You're going to input the data. So L1 gets the uh, explanatory variable, the x variable, which is depth. So 20, 30, 40, 50, and 60. And then over in L2, you get the max dive time, which is 100, 95, 91, 83, and 70. So then just to see the scatter plot, I'm going to hit zoom. And you want zoom stat, as always. And you can see I got a little error here. So what I have to do is I just have to make sure my plot one, oops, it was off. So I'm gonna turn it on. I totally did that on purpose. So you're gonna hit zoom and it's number nine, zoom stat. And you see this. Okay, so what you see here is that looks like, now it's not a perfect straight line, but it looks like there's a negative linear relationship going on here. So I'm just gonna kind of recreate the scatter plot real quickly kind of look like this and it looks like a negative linear relationship okay let's calculate the value of R the linear correlation coefficient so to do this you're gonna hit stat you're gonna go over to calc all right and the option you want is number four linreg so if you have a TI-83 calculator just hit enter again if you have T84, you're going to scroll down to calculate, and you're going to see this. And this last one here is uh, your, your value of our linear correlation coefficient. So it's negative 0 0.9701. Okay, that's my value of R. So what you can see here, using the critical value tables, just to confirm that there is a, a linear relationship. You go to your sample size, which is N. So I have one, two, three, four, five sets of data. And this is my cutoff value. So as long as the absolute value of R is greater than 0 0.878, which it is, like if you take the absolute value of this, it's greater than the cutoff value. So what we're able to say is there is strong evidence of a negative linear relationship here. So negative linear relationship between the variables. Okay, great. So now let's answer some questions. Find the LSR line. So this is that least square regression line. So that was y hat is equal to ax plus b. So just so we're clear here, what y hat is, it's the predicted 
um, uh, max dive time. And what x here is, is your depth. So it turns out your calculator just does this for you perfectly. Like you can see right here on your calculator, it tells you y is equal to ax plus b. It tells you what a is, and it tells you what b is. Okay, so a is negative 0 0.72, and b is 116.6. So my least squared regression line here is just y hat is equal to negative 0 0.72x plus 116 Point six, just from the calculator. And you can do that in this class, okay? You know, in a previous lecture, you saw me find the regression equation by hand. You don't have to do that here anymore, okay? You can just write straight, use the calculator. So here we see the slope was equal to minus 0 0.72. So what this means, as x increases by 1, y is going to decrease by this. So what is x? Depth. So the slope would be interpreted this way. As you increase the depth by 1 foot, okay, you increase depth by 1 foot, max dive time decreases. By 0 0.72 minutes on average. Okay, next question here. Is it reasonable to interpret the intercept here? Well, the intercept is uh, that B value here is 116.6. So you have to ask yourself two questions. All right, are there values? close to x is equal to 0? Well, if you look back at our data, not really, right? First x value we have is 20, so no. And then 2 is a value of x equals 0 reasonable, right? Like, like so what we're saying here is, is, uh, is it reasonable to say a max depth of 0 feet? Uh, no, no. So it is not reasonable to interpret the intercept here. Okay. And, you know, we did an example in a previous lecture where it was um, reasonable to interpret the intercept, but just not, not here. It just doesn't make sense for the model. All right, that doesn't mean you disregard it. It's just it's just model noise. You just keep it there. Okay, estimate the max dive time at a depth of 55 feet. So remember our equation is y hat is equal to 0 0.72x plus 116.6. Well, I'm telling you the depth, so you're given that x is equal to 55. So what you're going to do is you're going to plug it in. So you're going to plug it in for x. And you're just going to grab your trusty calculator for this. You're going to take minus 0 0.72 times 55 plus 116.6. And this is what you're going to get. Your max dive time is 75.35 minutes. Okay, so what that means is we predict a max dive time of 75.35 minutes at a depth of 55 feet. You know, if you go back here, um, 55 feet is somewhere between here. So you would expect a value between 83 and 70, which is what we got. All right, at what max depth? Okay, so now I'm asking you to find max depth. Could you dive for 60 minutes? So you're given, you're given a time. So you're actually given y hat here. 
you're given the max dive time of 60 here. So you're going to plug this in to the equation. So you're going to plug in for y hat, and you're going to solve for x. So you're going to place my y hat. You're going to get 60 is equal to minus 0 0.60 is equal to negative 0.72x plus 116.6. So you're just going to solve this linear equation here. So those are gone. 60 minus this gets you minus 56.6. Then you're just going to divide both sides here. Very, very simple. These cancel. A negative divided by a negative becomes a positive. And so 56.6 divided by 0 0.72 gets you roughly 78.61. So what we're saying is here we predict a max depth of 78.61 feet for a max dive time of 60 minutes. So you can see, you know, once you once you're willing to use the calculator here, you know, you get the equation. It's just really just to plug it in and solve for one of the variables problems. All right, let's do another one real quick. Um, so here, all right, we have a uh, number of absences in your final grade here. Okay, so you're given the number of absences, and you have your final grade here. So the first thing you have to figure out is which is the explanatory. And which is the response? Well, I think here the number of absences explains your final grade to some certain degree, right? You know, like if someone has 10 absences, I think that's a pretty good indication of a low grade compared to someone who has zero absences. All right, so let's go and create the scatter plot for this and comment on the relationship. So the first thing you're going to have to do is you have to go back in your calculator and you're going to edit the list and clear all the data out from the previous example. So you're going to go, you know, 10, just going to put it in an order, okay? 12 absences, 2 absences, 0, 8, 5, 1. And then you're just going to put the, the Y in. You know, 60, 50, 90, the 100, 70, 80, and then 92. All right, so now what's going on here is your problem is um, zoomed to the previous example. So you're going to have to go back. You're going to have to hit zoom, and it's number nine, zoom stat. Sorry about that. And you can see here, this is what the relationship looks like. All right, and it looks like it's a negative linear relationship. Okay, so unfortunately, it's just like the previous example. All right, just by looking at it, it's not a perfect straight line, but you can definitely see that linear pattern to it. All right, let's calculate the value of R, the linear correlation coefficient. So again, you're going to hit stat. You're going to scroll over to calc. And it's option number four here, again, this linreg. I'm going to go here, hit enter, scroll down to calculate. And you can see we have it right here. So R is equal to negative 0 0.9948. So it's, it's like really close to negative one here. Okay, so you can look, go back and look at that critical value chart, but it's so close to negative one. What we're seeing here is strong evidence of a negative linear relationship. All 
Okay, let's find the LSR line and let's round to two decimal places here. Okay, and again, your calculator just it just gives you this, right? Like A is equal to negative three point eight seven, and B is equal to ninety eight point four six. Okay, so it's y hat is equal to this ax plus b. So y hat is equal to my slope here, negative 3.87, plus the intercept is b, this 98.46. All right, let's go and do these two problems. Let's predict a final grade for four absences. Well, x is the number of absences, right? And y is the final grade. So you're given. So you're going to go y hat is equal to negative 3.87 times 4 plus 98.46. And you're just going to plug this into your calculator. Minus 3.87 times 4 plus 98.46 and you get it roughly I'm just gonna this is an 82.98 which is roughly an 83 so we estimate a final grade of 83 for a student with four absences Okay, now let's estimate the number of absences for a final grade of 87. So here you're asking to solve for x. So they have to give you y, which they do. They give you the final grade. So you just have to plug in like this. 87 is equal to minus 3.87 times x plus 98.46. So you're just going to take your calculator and solve this, right? You're going to take 87. You brought over this 98.46. And then you just divide it by the slope. And you get 2.96, which is roughly three absences. So we estimate three absences for a final grade of 87. All right, class, I, I hope it helped uh, seeing me do uh, two more problems like this.